I got a tutorial today on how to make these gaming boards for your miniature war games, all right? And I got, I got a cool technique that I think is worth sharing. This is a smaller one by two board. It fits into some larger boards that I made, but pretty simple, some pretty simple materials to get this kind of effect. All right, we're gonna be using, to start everything off with, we'll use some like, uh, these really thin like particle board. I think it's particle board. Just got it at the hardware store, but you can find anything that you can set this on or set your, uh, your ground on, all right? Foam, this is a four pack of some quarter inch foam, all right, from Woodland Scenics, all right? Uh, we're gonna be using some denser foam to make like rocks if we need to for one of the things I'm gonna make. We'll have some rocks. And the secret ingredients are these things right here. Some wall texture, some quick way to get some texture on your board, and then some flex stone spray or stone coarse texture spray from Krylon. But the other brands make it. I might even use another brand that I have in there. But the, the texture spray really helps a lot. Uh, there's a couple other things in there. We got some flock, some fine ballast, also from Woodland Scenic to kind of just sprinkle on there to change the texture up a bit and then paints and all that stuff. All right? Okay, so here is the particle board. Uh, I've seen different kinds, like at the hardware store. This one had like a chalkboard back, but it didn't matter. It was the right thickness I wanted. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do before I glue it on, uh, glue the um, styrofoam on, is I'm gonna score it. So it's pretty smooth and slick on one side. So in order to make sure that the um, uh, glue has something to grab onto, I like to score it. Okay, another thing I like to do, which is kind of weird maybe, but I cut up my styrofoam. And the reason why is because in the past I've uh, glued styrofoam to board and it's bowed a bit. And I think it's because the glue uh, you know, when it dries out, it constricts a little bit and can pull the board. So in order to prevent that, I go ahead and I chop it up and then glue it on. And I use numbers just so I can keep track of which one goes where. So I'm just pushing it against the uh, edge to make sure it's flush. Okay, so now I'm just going to use some regular old wall spackle and just kind of fill in any spots. So if you don't want to do these first couple steps in terms of, uh, you know, cutting up the styrofoam and gluing it uh, down and then filling in the spackle. It's kind of up to you, but just from my experience, I've had some bowing in the past and it doesn't take too long to do this. So I just go ahead and chop it, glue it, make sure the glue's not together. So one thing I didn't say is that I make sure that I'm not gluing the pieces together. I'm gluing them each individually down to the board. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some rocks. Just, I, I use these kind of rocks that have this like uh, almost lava rock kind of texture. And we're gonna go ahead and use them like stamps and just kind of press into the styrofoam. And this styrofoam is from Woodland Scenics, and it's just a good consistency for this. It holds the uh, the shape very well. Uh, so the denser foam kind of pushes back a little bit, but I still use it on that as well, but it pushes back a little. And if the foam's, the foam's too soft, it just kind of cuts into it and rips it apart. But here's a little close-up so you can kind of see the texture I'm able to achieve. And it's actually not too bad, and I'd be curious to see what that looks like on its own, even just painted like that. Um, but it looks pretty good. Changing the sides of rocks, rotating them just to get different shapes. All right, here's a close up kind of what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm gonna spray this uh, wall spackle kind of uh, texture on it just to add some more kind of variation in the, uh, you know, the texture. Okay, and before it dries, because it dries pretty fast, uh, I'm just putting on some. Uh, just dropping in some, uh, like, uh, what is it called? Fine ballast. Again, it's a Woodland Scenic product, and I have a little mix going there of a couple different sizes. But I'll spray a little bit and then kind of sprinkle a little on there. It actually doesn't, it dries so fast, it really doesn't adhere very well. Uh, but it does give it a little bit of variation. And some does inevitably come off, but it's not a big deal. Kind of end stage. I'm not, I don't add too much, but once again, this is all up to you. If you want to add a bit more, um, you know, a bit more... Uh, actual dirt and stuff in there you can you want to add less that's fine and in the past i've based whole boards with like the woodland scenic uh product and it eats up a lot of like of your um of your dirt or your sand or whatever you want to call it your ballast and you know um i had I just with this terrain i wanted to look different okay so the next step after all that dries i left it for a few hours i'm spraying some uh some spray some spray stone and this is like texture that you can find pretty much at any hardware store or craft store. And the stone looks pretty good. Um, so on top of everything, right, on top of the dented styrofoam, on top of the um, wall spackle and the rocks, 
hoping that it kind of holds some of those rocks down. So there's one coat, and then I'll just go ahead and do another coat. Again, up to you if you want it to look rocky or less rocky, you can do less. But I like to add one more coat and make sure I get a nice little layer on there. And it doesn't have to be quite even because it's, you know, it's nice to have a little variation. And then I usually wait until the next day and let everything dry until I do the next step. So next step that I do, again, maybe you could skip this one if you don't want to, but I like to add a little thin layer of like watered down glue just to kind of hold, basically to hold those rocks down. Uh, those, those rocks don't stay very well. And I thought they'd sink a little deeper into the, uh, the wall spackle when I started, but they didn't end up, you know, sinking in too deep. So that kind of just, you know, uh, prompted me to go ahead and add a little layer of uh, tacky, uh, what's it called? Not tacky. Um, oh, I'm blanking out. No, is it tacky glue? Tacky glue. I think that's right. Okay. Anyway, so mixing around, getting it nice and watered down in a pretty thin, pretty thin coat, but it also kind of protects the styrofoam from a little bit. So it's kind of nice to put a little protective coat on there and just kind of add a layer. Try not to get too thick when I see it like kind of filling up the uh, little divots I've made. Um, I like to kind of get it out of there so it's more of a layer rather than like pooling in places if I can. But overall, it didn't end up, you know, being too bad. I like to get the um, edges as well. Just again, so it adds a little protective layer. There we go. Edges done. All right. Then let that dry for a few hours. Okay. When it's dry, using my uh, cheap um, ceram coat craft paint, which I love. I say cheap and I don't mean bad. I mean, it's got great uses. And one of the great uses is just bulk paint for terrain. So I'm going to lay a nice little layer of black down. And I have a lot of the black. The next color I uh, use, I don't have a ton of. So I, maybe I could go straight to the, the next color. But um, I've kind of always laid down a nice thick layer of black. I don't know. Again, you could choose to go straight to your um, you know, base color. But I like to add a little layer of black first. And again, pretty thick. Well, I say, say thick, but I'm laying it on pretty heavy. All right. Again, not trying to. Now, the craft uh, paint can be a bit thick. So you do have to water it down usually when you use it anyways. But. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making sure it's got a good consistency. All right, hitting those edges too, just to make it sure it looks a little neat. Plus, sometimes you can see between the boards a little bit, right? The boards don't always end up being completely flush. As hard as you try, they always end up being a little bit off. I don't know. I've, I've tried pretty hard making sure everything was squared up. But once you cut everything, I mean, you know, not everything's perfect. You know, this just takes a little bit to be off to make everything off. All right, there it is. Got it all covered. Um, I usually don't have to add a second coat if I just kind of, you know, do the first coat properly. Okay, there we go. Obviously, you got to let that dry. And then once it's dried, I'm going to come back with my uh, dark burnt umber color, which is just like a really deep brown. You can see it almost looks like black, I guess, in the uh, video, but it actually is dark brown. And they don't, I can't find it in bulk. I, I used to see it in bulk like years and years ago, like in that, what I mean by those big bottles. Now I only see it kind of in the little bottles once in a while. And I can't even, I have a hard time even finding that color uh, online or anywhere. But I had a bunch of it, and it's kind of what I used for the terrain I already had going, which I, I started some of the terrain um, that I'm building all this into uh, years and years ago. So I wanted it to match. So I'm doing the exact same process, which is basically the black, then laying my dark burnt umber on. And you can see the brown now pretty, um, pretty well. And laying it on pretty thick as well. So not really dry brushing or anything. Uh, I'm, I am trying to get a pretty solid coat of the dark burn umber. Okay, next I'm using my more of a regular kind of brown color. I forgot what it's called. Um, medium brown? I don't know what it's called, but it's another ceram coat color. This one's pretty uh, easily available. And on this, now I'm starting to dry brush. Okay, so drying off the brush, right, with a paper towel and then picking up the edges. Now I'm doing a, a bit of a heavier dry brush than I'm gonna do in a second, so a little bit heavy. I want you know the recesses to stay dark burnt umber, but I do want the tops of all the texture to uh, catch this uh, brown color, right? And you're gonna turn it around, hit it from different angles, and you can go, it goes pretty fast. So once you hit this stage, everything goes pretty quick. Okay, so once I got that, I'm gonna do my kind of ochre color and I'm going to do a dry brush, a last uh, dry brush coat uh, with this kind of ochre color. I think it's called golden brown or something like that. But it's another ceram coat. And now I'm trying to do a bit of a lighter dry brush and being careful. And you can see it kind of catching 
uh, if I don't move my brush right and kind of make it straight lines. Uh, but you know, you can either fix it or water it down or, or I know I'm going to add flock on top of this. So anytime I see something like that, I'm going to go ahead and not worry about it too much because I know I'm going to add another layer of like grass and that kind of thing on top of, uh, on top of the, uh, dirt, the pseudo dirt. All right, here we go. Speed dry brushing. Okay, there I am finishing this up. And I, I just, this color combination, I've, I've used in a lot of models for their bases, and which is why I made my terrain the same thing. I just kind of keep it all matching a lot of times. And All right, and this is a last little hit of dry brush for the, uh, the golden brown color. All right, there it is. Okay, so between this whole thing, I didn't film it, but I, I spray it with a matte varnish. And I don't use my testers, which I use for my models. I use the testers, which is a bit pricier. But for this, I used a rust-oleum matte varnish, uh, which isn't as matte as testers, so it does have a little bit of a sheen on it, but um, but it, you can buy big cans and it's a lot cheaper than uh, testers. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna add the uh, flock to it, the grass. So making a nice little uh, watered down mixture of tacky glue. And, uh, you know, getting it nice and consistent and pretty, pretty watery. All right, and then uh, I have it butted up against the terrain that I'm going to uh, put it next to so I can kind of make sure it kind of matches, right? So I can make sure it lines up and the grass kind of uh, continues where the other grass is. And, you know, and then I can move it away, make sure I don't get glue on the other boards. All right, so get kind of get a bit on there, get it kind of, um, you know, the way, the way I want to do this, I want to do it kind of splotchy. You could obviously cover the whole thing if you wanted. But now I'm going with a smaller brush and just kind of breaking up the uh, spaces with some smaller little dots of glue and then to just vary the color a little bit uh, i'm going to add a pinch of this green um, woodland scenics blended turf and when i was looking at reference for the terrain i was trying to do which is um, you can kind of see the bunker there for star wars endor kind of uh, scene uh, you know that a lot of the 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 ground was covered with more like you know in a forest like that it's more like dead leaves and needles and pine or you know whatever leaves and pine needles and stuff so mostly it was brown but i wanted to break it up with a little bit of that green okay and this stuff i found actually at hobby lobby and i wasn't expecting to find it and i just saw it there and they have a bunch of craft stuff there and i didn't expect to find the exact color i was looking for uh and it was a good price and it looked great and it was the exact color i was looking for to represent the uh you know the kind of the floor of the forest with kind of more, um, more dead, you know, foliage and stuff. And I mean, I covered a lot of boards. You can see some of them up there, but there's even more, uh, sections, uh, you know, that I, that are not in the frame and they were, um, I, I've got more than, I've got 75% of it still left and I was able to get a lot of board in there. So, and it looks great. Now I'm going in again with the, uh, finer brush. And then once again, hitting spots for the kind of green to pop, just to change the color. Okay, and then once again, sprinkling on the brown ground cover um, liberally. Okay, and just to show you, you know, how to get it off and then how to re reuse what's not, you know, sticking to the board. So I'm going to slide that little poster board. That's why I have that poster board under there to kind of catch the excess. And then kind of just, uh, you know, try and catch it all. Give it a little tap, shake it off, change angles, tap it again. Stuff that might have caught from the, the first angle. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, take my poster board and kind of roll it a little bit. And dump it in this little container I'm using to catch all the... Uh, excess and then I can reuse that the next time I dump uh, more on there and then rinse and repeat till you have what you uh, like okay and that is, you know that's the final step just adding that foliage and here's uh, this configuration of the board put together and you can see I put some terrain on top of it and you know it's just kind of up to you how much you want to put on there how spotty you want to make it look how uh, covered you want to make it look but there it is Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it uh, helped you out. Hope it inspired you maybe to make some boards. See you next time.